Place-based innovation, territorial transformation, societal challenges. Many times, when we launch a new project, we get lost in big words that seem to lead the way, and therefore, the discussion. But do they all know what they mean? My name is Esther. I come from Germany. My name is Francesca. I come from Italy, but I do live in Germany. My name is Leah. I'm from Ireland, County Cork. I don't think I know what place-based innovation is. I'm not too sure, to be honest. <laughs> I don't understand that question. Place-based? Place-based innovation. Yeah, I have no clue, I'm sorry. Pardon? Place-space innovation. Uh, sorry, I don't know. <laughs> don't know that one. I mean, it's when territories, right, get transformed with like uh, time, maybe, and innovation, maybe. Today, we will be talking about a new project, a European Union preparatory action led by the European Commission's Joint Research Centre and backed up by the European Parliament. We will try not to get lost in the jargon, since we have more than 240 territories from all over Europe coming with us on this journey. Welcome to Where It All Happens, a Territories in Action podcast. My name is Maria Marque, and I invite you to come with us on this European tour. Together, we will visit amazing cities, discover regions, and explore places. All of them with their own essence, but also with challenges to overcome. And of course, with the potential to innovate. Tag along through nine episodes in which we will try to understand what we can do to make these special places grow and become more sustainable, more digital, and overall ready for the future. We're here today with JSC researcher Margarita Bachigolupo, who is going to help us discover and understand the reality of the apparently complicated concept of innovation for transformation. Plaats gedragen innovatie voor structurele verandering. Plaatsbaseerd innovatie voor transformatie. Innovatie gebaseerd in het territorium. Territoriale innovatie na zet transformatie. And in Italian, how would we say innovation for place-based transformation? Innovazione per la trasformazione legata al territorio. Margarita works on innovation policies and economic impact at the Joint Research Center. She has led the team behind the Action Book, a manual for regions and cities of real-life examples of place-based transformation, and is also one of the pillars of this new preparatory action. Most importantly, her background gives her a special sensitivity to the role that innovation can play in improving people's lives and visions. Grazie, Marge, and thanks for sharing your knowledge with us. Thank you for having me here. So let's talk a little more about this type of innovation. Can you tell us what it really means and why it's so important to promote it? Sure. Uh, innovation for place-based transformation is about addressing uh, today's challenges, the challenges that affect uh, territories around us, uh, like climate change, productivity, uh, demographic change, biodiversity loss, the big challenges society is facing today. And the place-based aspect relates to the fact that territories uh, are f living these challenges in different way. Uh, you can relate to climate change and think about how it affects uh, an area where um, there are floods or an area where there is droughts. For example, helping a bird use its wings so it can fly higher and faster? Uh, in a way, yes. Um, in a way, yes. And it's uh, to make it uh, really clear is uh, important to stress that what we are looking for is long term term change, uh, uh, change that transforms societies, not only technology, and that has um, the capacity to shape our economy and our life for a sustainable uh, transition. Let's enter into uh, a real life example. So imagine a city that is trying to reduce uh, traffic and uh, pollution related to traffic. A traditional policy would focus on solution reducing emission from cars, you know, zone A and zone B with a different uh, kind of emission, even pushing the electric vehicles. It could even go to the point of uh, supporting the, the plugs for uh, recharging your, uh, um, your car in the city. But while this is innovation for sure, is not transformative in the sense that it doesn't change the, the relation between people and mobility. So transformative innovation, look at how you can change the mobility system uh, to 
towards sustainability. Uh, I think about uh, cities that rethink their mobility uh, by making the city walking friendly, bike friendly, or that support public transport by financing it and making it free for citizens. This is a way to uh, not only think about technology that can address a problem, but how to shape the relationship between the system and people and change also their behavior. Okay, I think I'm getting where you're going. So it's clear that a big city always has these type of problems, but not everybody lives in a big city. Can we also talk about an example in a rural town? Let's say my uncle who lives in the south of France. Well, sure. Many rural areas are facing problems like the population. And then across Europe, uh, rural reality are very different. So uh, a transformative approach to innovation for place-based transformation linked to rural area would, uh, would allow to tackle the issue of uh, small farming um, and uh, not only developing technologies that could uh, support small farming and adapting to uh, to the local climate uh, situation. And this is not done by magic. This means involving the local uh, universities and bring students to tackle projects in their territories and address the problems your uncle has. But he could also uh, think about expanding the problem uh, space and not only looking at at technologies that could address his lack of labor force, uh, but also think about how we can bring back people to the rural areas, implying that you also have to bring back services because people are leaving the rural areas because the services like education, medical services, move to the cities. So it's really a comprehensive view of how te technology innovation can shape the life of people. The JRC has been deep diving in this transformative innovation concept for a few years now. We began with smart specialization strategies, and there is no doubt that it's a topic that institutions are willing to explore. The Committee of the Regions jumped on board with the Partnerships for Regional Innovation pilot project, together with 74 territories from all over the EU. They also worked with us in the publication of the Action Book. And our latest initiative will take us on a journey for the next two years. Is it a surprise that so many territories have shown interest in this? Well, it came as a surprise, but I think it's uh, is telling about how territories want to be part of shaping their own uh, future. So the, the, the fact that there is uh, no financial support and we are only asking territories to volunteer and participate with us in, in this journey uh, means that they are interested to uh, contribute to uh, shaping of our common agenda and also that they are willing to keep experimenting and learning to help us uh, and uh, help themselves uh, facing the challenges of today. And what makes this initiative different from the ones before? Well, this time, uh, a preparatory action uh, requested by the European Parliament gives us a, a very different playground. We are working with um, preparing future legislation, uh, and this makes it uh, potentially much more impactful than the pilot project we had before. Let's talk a little about the structure of this new project. How is it going to go about? Well, most territories have applied to work together uh, around similar challenges. Um, they have applied to share experience, to work together, to learn from one another, and to progress jointly in this journey. Having lots of regions in Europe embarking on these challenges, there is much to learn about each other's ideas and plans. By focusing on one specific challenge area, we can benefit from each other's experiences and move forward collectively. We are listening to Joyce Kuiper from Overizel. In their case, mastering the digital transformation is key to support industries in the area. As I understand, each territory has chosen a challenge as their priority. In this specific case, digitalization. How has the work been distributed? Well, uh, we had a, a call for expression of interest. We launched in October last year, uh, where we put forward seven challenges and territories have applied to different uh, way of uh, working with us and together. Some have applied to uh, an awareness raising track, some other have applied to uh, capacity building and some to experimentation. Some has have also chosen uh, uh, to participate in more tracks. Uh, awareness raising, for instance, is uh, uh, the 
um, requires uh, very little engagement uh, from them. They, they are going to have access to content that we will produce, like a newsletter, this podcast, uh, audiovisual material that we will create, masterclasses. And so they will be exposed to the content of the transformative innovation research we're doing. So me and you are part of the awareness raising, huh? Oh, oh wow. wow, what an honor. And the capacity building? Capacity building is a journey that requires uh, territories to engage in um, online learning activities, uh, in-presence learning activities, and a lot of self-learning. So it's it's a way to, to engage them in uh, developing competencies uh, that are required to drive uh, transformation and change, and um, that is based on the action book that we published and the experiences that uh, we have collected in the previous uh, part of our research research, but is also engaging them in sharing with us their own uh, learnings. And last but not least, we have the experimentation track, right? Tell us a little more about that one. Yes, the experimentation track is the one that uh, requires territories to to work on uh, um, on their challenges uh, and to continue working on the track they have already uh, covered. So it requires them to keep experimenting and to focus on a challenge and to work together. This track will last uh, nine to twelve months and will require territories to to really advance on their agenda. Indeed, the different tracks have required different kind of support for the capacity building, we had uh, the commitment of a civil servant to work on, uh, uh, to dedicate the time to the learning activities. But when it comes to the experimentation challenges, we have asked territories to submit uh, a political uh, support letter. This means that we really have uh, achieved that territories uh, mobilize their political support to ensure that what they will experiment will land on a fertile ground. So this choose your own challenge reminds me a little bit of these books I read when I was little. It was choose your own adventure. So Marga, if you don't mind, take us through these challenges. We have territories that want to digitalize their services. For instance, healthcare. Hospital and care center in Lombardy have started to use technology solution and artificial intelligence for personalized care. So far, however, there is no networking of this individual attempt. Others want to uh, work on uh, the digitalization of economy and improve to improve their competitiveness. We see enabling technologies like photonics, robotics and artificial intelligence claiming a bigger role in industrial and service processes. There are territories working to reduce reliance on fossil fuel. It requires investing, taking risks, innovating, and building proof of concepts at the forefront of the energy transition. And this places tremendous demands on the capacity for innovation and renewal of the entire innovation ecosystem. We also have territories that want, want to work on climate adaptation. We hope to have a systematic approach and methodology to incorporate innovation on a post-catastrophe recovery in order to enable, first, a recovery and transformation for climate resilience. To increase global food, food security. And we want to focus on the design of a place-based and multi-level sandbox addressing the huge challenge of food security. Or achieve circularity. We would like to learn more about how to achieve circularity and still be competitive. And of course, this day we cannot uh, forget about uh, societal preparedness. Our region has strong tradition in the engineering industry, particularly in aviation, automotive and IT, with potential for dual-use technologies. Podkarpatsky can serve as a bridge for cooperation between Europe and Ukraine, leveraging its experience and location. And last but not least, the sustainability, beauty and inclusiveness of the new European Bauhaus project. These voices we've just heard now begin the journey. These are our territories in action. And from then, we will be taking and hearing in coming episodes, where we will talk about each of the different challenges. Margarita, thanks for joining us today. Best of luck on this journey. Thank you so much. We stay in touch. So to sum it up, two years of work ahead and eight challenges to face. All this lies ahead of us to be discovered in the next episodes of Where It All Happens.